Hi, my name is Terry Pancook, and I'm going to show a molar root canal completion visit. After removal of the temporary access filling, you can rinse with 8.25% sodium hypochlorite and then use files to clear patency. Next, rinse out the sodium hypochlorite with alcohol, then suction and dry for our adjunctive research irrigant, 90% trichloracetic acid which is used in small volume through a special delivery device. It improves patency clearing, residual calcium hydroxide removal, and hemostasis. Studies are currently being conducted to show its clinical benefits. This video shows passive filing, which is removing the residual calcium hydroxide from the root canal system. It is also useful to use the endoactivator to help solubilize and remove the remaining calcium hydroxide and debris. Adding sodium hypochlorite to the remaining trichloracetic acid liberates microbubbles of chlorine gas and CO2 and buffers to water. This likely enhances root canal space disinfection. After thorough agitation, the root canal space is copiously irrigated with the 8.25% sodium hypochlorite. Next, final shaping can be performed by the rotary files of your choice. I use the dense ply Pro Taper Gold files. This is beginning the sequence with the S1, S2, then I use F1, F2, and sometimes F3. In narrow roots, like the mesial root of this case, I will limit my finishing to the F1 rotary file. I'm speeding up the video four times normal speed just to get through this tedious uh, repetitive process of the rotary finishing. It is important not to use the same file too many times in a row or push hard, which will create tip stress and possibly a separated instrument. Copious flushing with the sodium hypochlorite prevents debris buildup and blockage. Cleaning and shaping has been completed in the distal canal. The length is 19 millimeters, and we are sizing the cone, cutting it back to 19 millimeters so that there is smooth tug back when withdrawing the cone from the canal. This gutta percha gauge is a very handy device that allows very precise cutting. The distal cone is now perfectly sized, fitting to 19 millimeters, at a 0.42 millimeter diameter tip. We are now shaping the mesial root canals at 4x speed. Both have a 19.75 length and we're going through the rotary instrumentation again, S1, S2, F1, not really going to the apex with the F2 or F3. We are now seeing the cone fitting of the MB and ML canals. Looks like in this canal, I need to cut the cone back uh, just a half a millimeter. This molar has mesial canals with two separate apices. So they have to be fit separately with both having adequate tug back. Sometimes multiple cutbacks have to be performed to get it just right. In this case, I started at a smaller diameter and ended up cutting back at 0.32 millimeter diameter. There I am exactly to 19.75 millimeters. Now I'm placing all the cones and all the canals in preparation of taking a cone fit radiograph. I took the radiograph at an off angle to make sure I could see the two mesial root apices clearly. Now I'm performing the final canal clearing and drying. The first solution I use is alcohol, which I then clear and dry with suction in preparation of placing 90% TCA, which will dissolve all remaining loose debris and perform hemostasis. I again place the TCA with a special delivery device that delivers very small volumes into each canal. 
Note the characteristic bubbling as I agitate it and remove remaining debris. The dental assistant is using high vac suction to catch any small splatter that may be occurring with the TCA. You cannot view this as it is outside the field of the microscope. As in the beginning, sodium hypochlorite is now combined with the TCA. Note the micro bubbling of CO2 and chlorine gas, which likely enhances debridement. An interesting discovery is that the use of TCA empirically seems to decrease post-operative pain. The next solution I use is 17% EDTA. I thoroughly flush the entire root canal system with this irrigant and I use the endo activator for 30 seconds in each canal. This clears any remaining smear layer and opens up accessory canals and thoroughly clears the apex. I'm speeding up the video to four times normal speed just to get through this uh, segment. After use of the EDTA, my final irrigant is alcohol again, which I use to dry the canal thoroughly. After the alcohol flush, the canal is evacuated with a micro suction tip, blown dry with a stropco, and finally the canals are apically dried with paper points. Here's the purple micro suction. You can see when I suction the fluid out of the mesial lingual, it's not suctioning it out of the mesial buccal. These are clearly two separate canal systems. Next, I'm blowing the canals and pulp chamber dry with a Stropco syringe. You can see how the pulp chamber floor frosts. You can also see there's a soffit on the buckle that I'm going to remove later with a burr after filling the canals. Next, I'm drying the apex of each of the canals with paper points. The remarkable hemostatic properties of the TCA results in the paper point tips being absolutely dry once completely blotted. There's no blood or exudate noted. Paper point blotting also allows you to validate your lengths and make sure that your gutta percha cones are to the proper length and you can cut them back slightly after noting any discrepancy with the paper point blotting. In this case, we're filling the distal canal first. And so I coat the apical third of the gutta percha cone with the Kerr regular set sealer placed to length. Next, I place a supplemental cone without coating of sealer to fill in the coronal space. I next sear the cones off with the touch and heat at the orifice level. Then I compact with a shielder number 10 plugger, lightly compacting just to express a lot of the excess sealer coronally. I repeat the process, heating with the touch and heat and compacting with a number nine plugger. You can see the excess sealer is constantly being expressed coronally. At least five waves of heating and compaction are performed to steadily deform and control the compaction of gutta percha. As Herb Shielder described, you want to capture the maximum cushion of gutta percha with your choice of plugger. The depth of compaction should end at approximately five millimeters from the root apex. And once you've heated the last pad of gutta percha at the apical level, you can then backfill with a hot shot or obtra or similar backfilling device. I like to coat the tip of the hot shot before injecting. 
At this point, I'm just cleaning up some of the excess at the orifice level and compacting it neatly. Before filling the mesial root, I like to again go back to the paper points and make sure there's no fluid accumulation at the apex. Next, we will fill the two canals in the mesial root. When placing the cones, I like to coat one cone, sear it off, not compacted, then place the next cone adjacent to it, sear it off, and then begin the compaction of each cone individually. Even though the two mesial root canal systems have separate portals of exit, if you try to compact one side first, you may squash gutta percha and sealer across a fin on the other side, which may prevent you from placing the cone accurately. It is best to fill the canals which are in the same root together. You can see how the sealer flows across the coronal fin connecting the MB and ML canals. As I did in the distal root, we start off searing the tag, then lightly compacting but not compressing the canal early on, and then moving with our five waves of compaction, starting with the 10 plugger, then usually immediately to the nine on the next wave, the second wave. And then as we get towards the tip, I decide where the maximum cushion can be compacted with the eight plugger. And at the deepest pack, five millimeters from the apex, I'll finally heat with the tushin heat and then backfill the root with the hot shot. Applying the tushin heat for three seconds at the deepest apical level, then compacting with the eight plugger holding with steady pressure. You can see the escape of residual sealer, and this has been shown through research to lead to good apical deformation and a clinically effective seal. Once all the canals are filled, you can remove the excess sealer in gutta percha. Gross gutta percha is removed with the touch and heat and compacting the orifices flush with a 10 plugger. When retreating other root canal cases, I'll often remove the core and find got to perch it all over the walls and pulp chamber floor. This is not good technique and really affects the quality of the coronal seal. And one of the biggest problems we have in endodontics is a compromised coronal apical seal. This predisposes to long-term contamination, and late-term failure. We are now going through the down pack and final filling of the mesial lingual canal. It is important to have your assistant completely wipe off the gutta percha from the touch and heat tip and the pluggers between each use. In most cases, just three pluggers are used. A size 10 at the beginning, then next the size nine, and then when a number eight fits, that's the last plugger that typically is used at the last apical level. When performing the backfill, place the hot shot tip directly against the gutta percha pad, compress with pressure, and allow the expression of the gutta percha to push the tip up. Here's the check radiograph showing the absence of voids. Next, I'm using a safe ended pulp shaping burr to remove the soffit that we identified earlier. After overhangs and soffits are removed with a burr, the excess cavity prep is rinsed and scrubbed with chloroform and then rinsed with alcohol to remove the remaining excess gutta percha and sealer. If the core is not to be replaced immediately, a temporary filling without a spacer should be compressed into the axis cavity prep. Space creates potential for contamination, so compressing and compacting that space with cavit, using a 12 plugger, moistened, and making sure there's no voids, helps to maintain the coronal seal. A properly filled root should show apical deformation of the material with splayed 
apical bulging of the material at the apex. Thank you for viewing my presentation.